What do you need to get started with NetLogo? Well, how about a little background and some examples? So for background, let's start with the ideas behind it, traced back to uh, French child psychologist Jean Piaget, who developed an entirely groundbreaking way of understanding how children learn that took over the world by storm and attracted the attention of Seymour Papert, a computer scientist at MIT, who wanted to know how do children learn math. Uh, he went to Paris, worked side by side with Piaget, uh, with young children, not a school situation, but a very pure learning situation. He came back to MIT and implemented those constructivist ideas in technology, creating the very first computer program, computer system, for kids to use. It used a mobile robot that could draw on paper, and you can see the sketch of the, of the fish and the teddy bear. Uh, this system called Logo uh, was the first to empower kids to use, but also to allow them to program. The little robot with its rounded hemispherical shell, like a turtle shell, was called a turtle, and that term turtle has stuck with us ever since. The, the news of children programming computers was so unbelievable that a California computer scientist in charge of developing a new kind of computer flew out to Boston to see it for his own eyes. That person, uh, on the way back fr from the visit, sketched this diagram of kids operating portable devices with text and graphics in a way that no one had ever imagined before. That man was Alan Kay. When he got back to California, he instructed his team to develop a, an interface for the new desktop computer system easy enough for a child to use. That meant, they figured out, using a computer mouse and pull-down menus so kids didn't have to remember commands and changeable type fonts and sizes so young kids could read the letters and Ethernet and laser printers for high quality printing for them. The system they created was again so groundbreaking it attracted the attention of Silicon Valley pioneers such as Steve Jobs who after one look at this system begged to license the technology for Apple. He did so and that became the computer interface for the first Macintosh computer whose evolution became the interface for all modern computers we use today. Seymour Papert had another thread of influence, his graduate students. So his idea, based on empowering kids, a computer is an object to think with, influenced his grad students Mitch Resnick and Uri Walensky. Mitch, his best known graduate student, went on to create the Scratch programming environment used worldwide by millions of kids. And Uri Walensky created a system with multiple turtles, multiple interacting agents, called Star Logo. Getting a job as professor at Northwestern University, he couldn't take the, the Star Logo name with him, so he called the product NetLogo. And it evolved into a system with up to thousands of turtles, of interacting agents. Uh, including a way to have them interact in three dimensions and NetLogo Web, uh, a system that will work in any web browser, especially for Chromebooks and iPads. So here's sort of the NetLogo family tree, stretching from today back to the 1950s and 60s, from an educational psychologist who developed the current way of we see that children learn, adopted by a computer scientist, Seymour Papert, into the logo computing environment. It so impressed Alan Kay, and there he is holding his Dynabook, just as he sketched uh, decades before. Uh, Alan Kay's system inspired Steve Jobs to develop the Macintosh, which led to the interface that we use in our lives every day. Mitch Resnick, Seymour Papert's grad student, went on to develop Scratch, used uh, in schools around the world, and Uri Walensky uh, went on to develop StarLogo, then NetLogo, uh, which has become the most used agent-based modeling system in the world today. 
Here we are at the Center for Connected Learning at Northwestern University, and we see the NetLogo site, but underneath it I'd like to draw your attention to courses, a list of middle school, high school, university online courses using NetLogo. Uh, there are probably more than a hundred courses in that list. Let's take a look at the NetLogo site. Here's the NetLogo homepage. The main thing you want to do here is probably download NetLogo to your Windows or Mac computer. Uh, you can also use this page for access to tutorials and everything, all the resources that NetLogo has. Or you can go to NetLogo Web if you want to use this in a web browser for an iPad, a Chromebook, or on a computer where you don't have permission to install software. Let's go to NetLogo Web. A sample simulation or model loads, but usually it's not the one that we want. I want the one that shows the spread of a forest fire, so I'm just going to type in fire for the search pattern. Otherwise, you have to scroll through way too many options. Here's sample models, earth science, fire, that's what we want, and the simulation is loaded. So there's a setup button, which is the way to, to initiate any model in NetLogo, and the go button to get it started. And we see a, a forest fire has started, but it seems to have burned its way out. Now look at the pattern of burning. I'm going to do setup again, go, and you may notice that the pattern's a little different. Well, what might make the fire burn more? Well, how about if we have a higher density of trees? Well. Let's see if, one, if the fire can hop from tree to tree to tree more easily. So here we can see that, gee, if you happen to have a house someplace here, it's toast. But there are other, other levels where, uh, you know, maybe let's, let's just do a setup at 61%. And it's not quite as aggressive. Will it go all the way? Will it burn itself out? Uh, if you have a house there, will it be destroyed? Well, this is a way that students and, and professional forest fighters can explore this. There are options that allow you to, to add things like uh, a wind from a particular direction, velocity, and so on. Now let's take a look at the downloadable version of NetLogo. When you start NetLogo, it looks pretty barren. You don't know what to do. There are no obvious directions. You can't scroll the menus to see, what do I do? Under the file menu, there is a models library. And that models library is nicely organized. So there are sample models, for example, under earth science. Here's the fire model that we just saw. Let's take a look at the climate change model. Now, each of the models has an explanation of what it does. So here it is. It's a model of energy flow in the Earth and so on. And I'm going to click Open. Before I do that, though, notice there's a, a button down here, Go to User Community Models web page. In there, there are perhaps 400 models, 400 simulations uploaded by kids, by teachers, by researchers that have uh, used NetLogo to create their own simulations. Uh, between the community models and the models library, you have well over 500 sample models to explore, plus you can create your own. But let's open this. Well, let's start with setup. And, you know, if we're not, if we're not sure what to do, there's an info button. So this says, exactly what it is. It's a model of energy flow on the Earth. Okay, how it works. It talks about yellow arrowheads stream downwards representing sunlight energy. Oh, okay. And away, and, and you can read lots and lots and lots about how to use. This is for every model. But uh, once we have set up, let's click go. And we can see these yellow uh, packets of sunlight coming down. The green is the Earth's surface, the blue is sky, black is outer space, and pink is the, the Earth's crust. And you can see some of the sunlight packets bouncing off back into space, reflecting from the Earth's surface. 
others are absorbed and turn into those little red dots, which are little packets of, would you guess? Yes, heat energy, because the sunlight energy is converted to heat. Now, you may notice the global temperature graph, which is scary. You may also notice that there are some red um, objects, red lines, going from the Earth's surface back into space. Now, it didn't start out that way, but they are starting, and we also see, gee, is the global temperature leveling off a bit? What could they be? So, uh, as a, a teacher, you may explain to your students, uh, students as young as third grade have used this, that, uh, gee, well, that's heat energy escaping away from the Earth. That's cooling the Earth down. Uh, scientifically, we would call that infrared energy. And we can see what happens if we add clouds. And um, you might see that, that clouds can reflect some of the sunlight. We can add CO2. And if you look closely at the, at the infrared rays, you may notice that if they collide with a CO2 molecule, they are reflected back to Earth. In other words, that heat is not escaping from the Earth, it's returned to the Earth. And you can see in the global temperature, it's rising again. So this is a magnificent model for explaining a very complex task. Each of the moving objects in there is one of Seymour Papert's turtles. Uh, but each one has, has um, rules that are simple for it to follow. One of the popular applications of NetLogo has been to explore the way that viruses spread. So let's explore the models library. I'm going to enter virus. So let's select the simple one. It's just called virus. And it says the model simulates the transmission and perpetuation of a virus in the human population. Here it is. We have lots of things to change, numbers of people, infectiousness, chance of recovery, duration. The setup gives us turtles or agents in the shape of people. And as we go, we can see that the green people are uninfected. They're healthy, but they're uninfected yet. They're, they're, the red people are infected. The um, gray people have gotten the infection and have survived. They are immune. To find the fire model on the desktop version, here is Earth Science and Fire. And once again, set up and go. Uh, I wanted to show you the code of this. It's essentially one page. It's actually less than one page without comments. So the idea of students understanding the actual computer code and being able to modify it is not an unreasonable expectation. I hope you take the opportunity to try NetLogo and uh, see if, if uh, your kids get all fired up over it, as millions have around the world.